Hey guys, this is Sam, and today I want to show you even more changes inside of iOS 11 Beta 5. Now, if you happen to miss my first video, I'll link it up here in the top right-hand corner of the screen. But let's go ahead and jump into even more of what's new in iOS 11 Beta 5. First up, if you're doing a screen recording in iOS 11 Beta 5, which is one of the coolest features in iOS 11 in general, the bar at the very top is going to be red instead of blue now. If you head over to any AirPlay menu in iOS 11 Beta 5 and you have AirPods connected to your device, you're going to see this really convenient battery percentage listed next to them now, which should help me make sure that they're consistently charged because a few times I've just not checked because it wasn't this easy and then I've gone somewhere with dead headphones. So I really like this change. When you're playing music and you look at the widget on the lock screen, it's now going to say the name of your device. So if you're using an iPhone, it will say iPhone right here. If you're on an iPad, it will say iPad. And I assume if you have an iPod Touch, it will probably list that as an iPod as well. This isn't a really functional change and I believe the way it's intended to work is that if you're airplane music on an Apple TV, for example, it would say whatever device device the music was outputting to, but right now it will just say iPhone, iPad, or presumably iPod as well. And if you head inside of the music app and start watching a video, Apple has tweaked the video player UI here to be different and unique from the stock video player in iOS 11. So the stock version looks like this, you have full screen in the top left, and it looks cleaner than the version in iOS 10. But for whatever reason in the music app, you've got this look, which is different and unique from the stock video player. There's a possibility that Apple could be testing this new UI and they started it in the music app and eventually it will take over the stock video player. But right now it looks sort of out of place considering the stock UI is a little bit different. Heading over to the settings app inside of the display zoom preference panel, the UI here has been updated to match iOS 11. Previously the screenshots were identical to those present in iOS 10 with iOS 10's icons and iOS 10's wallpaper. Those have both been updated to reflect the new icons and new wallpaper coming in iOS 11. On an iPad running iOS 11 beta 5, the app switcher animation when invoked from the home screen is a little bit different. I don't know if it's smoother or if things come together more quickly, but it's definitely changed from iOS 11 beta 4. One change that I haven't seen reported anywhere else yet has to do with the header text in some stock apps. So for example, inside of the settings application and also present in a few others, you've got this big text right here. And in previous betas, when you swipe down, nothing would happen. But in iOS 11 beta 5, when you swipe down, the text gets just a little bit bigger bigger and it only gets big to a point. It's not just going to keep getting bigger the more you swipe and scroll down, but it is a small change that looks pretty nice in the UI. The next change in iOS 11 beta 5 actually started back with iOS 10.3. It was when Apple first gave developers the ability to set alternate app icons or give users the ability to change app icons to make the app icon look like they wanted it to, which I think was a really cool change and I'm hoping that one day Apple will give us the ability to change the look of all our icons on the home screen, but I guess we can dream at this point. Well, in iOS 11 beta 5, I use an app called Bear for note taking and they support the new changing app icons that were introduced back in iOS 10.3. The new change in this beta is that when you select a new app icon, you're going to get a notification saying you've changed the icon for this application. It doesn't just happen in Bear, it should happen in any apps that change the app icon. Next up, inside of the FaceTime app, you can now long swipe from right to left to delete a FaceTime call. This is a feature that I hope we see everywhere because previously and a lot in iOS right now, you have to do a mini swipe and then a tap to delete something. I'm a big fan of being able to do everything in one gesture, and I hope we see this everywhere in iOS soon. There's one last change that I want to take a look at, and I would say this one is low-key controversial, so I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this down below. When your phone falls below 20% battery, it automatically disables the flash in the camera app. You get this little warning icon up here in the top left-hand corner of the screen and a notification saying flash is disabled. The iPhone battery is low and needs to be charged before you can use flash. Now, obviously, Apple did this to make sure that your phone would die slower because you were taking a lot of pictures with flash. It takes a decent amount of energy to make that light up consistently. But it's also kind of weird because I feel like that takes freedom away from the user. I mean, if somebody has 20% battery and they just want a picture with flash, that's going to be really annoying, especially people are generally taking pictures like this with flash at the end of the day when it's nighttime and their phone's going to be low on battery. So it's kind of a weird change. It makes sense from Apple's end, but I feel like it can make a lot of people angry if they really want to take a photo with flash. Hopefully there's a way to disable this in a future iOS 11 beta. Anyway, guys, that's going to wrap up this video. If you enjoyed watching it, feel free to drop a like down below and as always, it would really help me out. And of course, hit subscribe if you want to see more videos like this in the future. I've been Sam. I hope you're doing great and I'll talk to you later.